In this video, we're going to look at multiplying and dividing rationals. This is going to require you to simplify rationals, so if you haven't looked at that video, you should go back and check it out, um, because those skills are going to be referred to in this video as well. Multiplying and dividing rationals means multiplying and dividing fractions. So let's start out with some numbers, just like you did in elementary school. Say I had the fraction 2 over 3, and I wanted to multiply it by the fraction 6 over 5. Well, when we multiply fractions, what we do is we multiply the numerators and we multiply the denominators. So in this case, I'm going to do 2 times 6, which is 12, and 3 times 5, which is 15. Now, that's not actually simplified. We have to cancel out any common factors that we have. So if we look at 12 and 5, uh, 15, we know that both of them are divisible by 3. I'm going to factor this with 3. I have 3 times 4, and I have 3 times 5. Now we can cancel out our common factor of 3, and we're left with our final answer of 4 over 5. This is simple enough to do when you're dealing with numbers, but once we are looking at terms with x's and other variables, we want to sort of streamline our process. So let's go back to the very beginning. I want to look at that first fraction. 2 over 3 times 6 over 5. We can actually factor those a little bit further and simplify before actually going to the second step. So let's look at 2 and 3. 2 and 3 are prime numbers, so 2 over 3 is as simple as it gets. Times, well, 6 can be uh, factored a little bit. 6 is 2 times 3 over 5. Now, when you're multiplying fractions, you're basically just multiplying everything on the numerator and everything in the denominator. So when I'm multiplying them, really I just make them one giant fraction. Then we can go ahead and cancel out any common terms. So I see that I have 3 and 3 on the top. I can cancel those out. And then when we finish our problem, we end up with just 4, and then 5 is all that's left on the bottom. So that was sort of a, to me, simpler way to go about doing it. You're definitely going to want to factor first when you're looking at expressions as opposed to just numbers. So what about dividing? Dividing isn't all that much different from multiplying. So let's look at a fraction. 15 over 7 divided by the fraction 45 over 14. Remember that when you're dividing by a fraction, what you're really doing is multiplying by the reciprocal, the flip of the fraction. So this problem is really 15 over 17, or 7, sorry, multiplied by the reciprocal, which is 14 over 45. So let's do like we did before. Let's factor it before we actually do too much more. I have 15 and 7 and 14 and 45. I could go all the way down to the prime factorization, but I'm going to kind of think about commonalities. 15 and 45, they have a common factor of 15, so that means I'm going to factor them based on 15. 15 times 1, and then 45 is 15 times 3. Now let's look at 7 and 14. 14 is 2 times 7. 7 is 1 times 7. Now the reason I did that was because I my goal is to cancel out common factors. So now I have common factors of 7, and I have common factors of 15. So when I write my simplified fraction, I have 1 times 2, which is 2, over 3 times 1, which is 3. There are lots of ways that you could have done this. You could have factored all the way down to prime factorization, but once you start noticing that you want to cancel out common factors, that simplifies your fraction, or your factoring process a little bit. So here's one where we actually have those uh, terms with variables in them. So we're going to need to factor first. Factoring becomes really important when you're looking at just the terms. Um, I know that some of you guys are probably looking at this fraction, and you already see some commonalities between the numerator and the denominator. There's a couple of ways you can go about doing this problem. I'm going to do it the full process way, though, and factor everything completely, and then show you the shortcut. So let's factor each fraction individually. 6r plus 12 has a GCF of 6, so I'm going to factor out the 6. I'm left with r plus 2. 
Then I'm going to factor the 20 into its prime factorization. That would be 2 times 2 times 5. Now if we look at the other fraction, we have 2 times 2 times r. And then in the denominator, again, we have 6 times r plus 2. Now let's start canceling stuff out. r plus 2 can cancel those. Because remember, when you're multiplying fractions, you're just making one giant fraction, multiplying everything on top and multiplying everything on bottom. So I can cancel out across those fractions. r plus 2 and r plus 2 cancel. I also see that I have 6 and 6. They can cancel. 2, 2 can cancel. 2 and 2 can cancel. So when we look at what's left over, we actually have a pretty simple fraction. We have r in the numerator and 5 in the denominator, and we're done. So, what was the simpler way to do this? Not every problem has a simpler way, but in this case we actually do. I am going to start by going, hey, same thing on top and same thing on bottom, cancel each other out. And cancel out 6r plus 12. I also know that 4 is the common factor between 20 and 4. So I can cancel that, that out a little bit too. And cancel out the 4 with the 4 and the 20, and I'm left with a 5. So that leads me straight to my final answer, r over 5. Is one way more right than the other? No. It all just depends with what, uh, how comfortable you are with factoring and whether or not you notice those patterns. At the end of the day, we still ended up with the exact same answer. Yay! Now things are starting to get a little bit more exciting. We are factoring some trinomials in this problem. So, step one means factor everything further, or completely. So, for the first one, I'm thinking of numbers that multiply to be 25 and add to be negative 10. I end up with x minus 5 and x minus 5. Then, in the first denominator, I have a GCF of 10. So, I'm going to factor that out, and I'm going to be left with x minus 10. Now in the second fraction, x minus 10 can't factor any further, so I'm going to leave it as x minus 10. Remember, that's a whole factor in and of itself. In the denominator, mm, it's a little sticky. I am going to rewrite it. I like to have my x's first. That means it would be negative 9x plus 45. Now, I'm, that's what I'm going to factor. So when I factor that, I see negative 9 is the GCF. So now I have negative 9 times x minus 5. How convenient. Because remember, when you're multiplying, you're just multiplying all of the numerators by all of the denominators. So I can go ahead and start canceling common factors now. So it was a good thing that I rewrote that denominator because I can see that x minus 5 totally cancels out x minus 10 also cancels out. So when I look at what I'm left with, I have x minus 5 in the numerator, and I have 10 times negative 9 in the denominator, which is negative 90. So you could leave your answer like that. I know a lot of strict mathematicians like to always move the uh, negative sign to the numerator, which you can do as well. You can also write it out front. So this fraction can be rewritten in two other ways. You could say negative x minus 5 over 90. Or you could bring the negative to the top, so you had negative x minus 5 over 90. And you could even distribute that negative if you wanted to. But since we like factor form the best, um, I would probably leave it out there. And again, you're going to see why this matters when we do some more stuff with rationals coming up. So depending on who you're working with, it depends on what you want your final answer to look like. I'm not going to lie, this one is probably the best one, like I said, because you're going to use it uh, to do other things later on. This problem is a little bit different. It's different because we're not multiplying, we're dividing. But remember, when you're dividing by a fraction, you're really multiplying by the reciprocal. So I could say that this problem is actually... 8 over 4n squared minus 16n times n minus 4 over 1. Now let's go ahead and factor everything. So when we factor the numerator for the first one, we have 8. 
So I'm going to simplify that a little bit further. I'm going to say that I really have 4 times 2. The reason I'm doing that is because I'm looking ahead, looking at factoring the denominator. If I look at factoring the denominator, I have a GCF of 4n. And what I'm left with is n minus 4. So you can kind of see why I went with 4 times 2 in the numerator, because I'm going to have a common uh, factor. Now, if we look at the second fraction, well, n minus 4 doesn't factor any further, so I'm going to leave it n minus 4. And 1 also doesn't factor. Now we have this one giant fraction where we can cancel out common factors. So if we go ahead and cancel those common factors of n minus 4, and we cancel the common factors of 4, you can see that we're left with a pretty simple fraction. We have 2 in the numerator and n times 1, or 1n, in the denominator, and we're done. That really complex thing we started with simplified to be just 2 over n. Okay, back to multiplying. This is, saves us one little step. We don't have to worry about flipping anything. But we do have to start with our factoring. So I'm going to factor everything first. Conveniently enough, the first one doesn't need to factor anymore. So I can leave it 1 over p minus 9. The second one, well, the denominator doesn't factor at all. It's p plus 9. But the numerator does. We're looking for numbers that multiply to be negative 27 but add to be 6. So when we factor that trinomial on the top, we're going to have p plus 9. We're going to have p minus 3. So here I can see where my signs are really important. If we factor it with the wrong signs, if we put you know, negative 9 and positive 3, we're not going to be able to cancel the same factors, and we're going to end up with the wrong simplification. Pretty sure I factored this one right, though. So I'm ready to go ahead and cancel out common factors. Looks like p plus 9 is the only common factor. So I'm going to cancel those out, and then my final answer is just what I have left over. I have 1 times p minus 3 over p minus 9. I don't really have to write that 1, so I can write my final answer as just p minus 3 over p minus 9. Now, do not be tempted to cancel those p's out or simplify the 3 and the 9. Because, remember, you can only cancel out common factors. And factors are things that are getting multiplied. Not terms. Terms are things that are getting added and uh, subtracted. So we're done. Don't try to do anything further. It's okay. It's good. So another dividing one. Dividing means we're multiplying by the reciprocal. Now, rather than uh, write out the reciprocal again and then factor, I'm going to save myself a step. And I'm going to uh, factor and flip at the same time. If that's too confusing for you, take the additional step in between. I like to factor those, so it's pretty fast. All right, let's look at the first fraction. 6n plus 6. That uh, can be factored with a GCF of 6 n plus 9 cannot be factored, so it stays n plus 9. Now remember, we're flipping because we want to be able to write it uh, as a multiplication problem. And dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So when I have a new numerator, the new numerator here is going to be the factorization of n squared plus 6n minus 27. I just did this one, didn't I? What multiplies to be negative 27 and adds to be positive 6? n plus 9 and n minus 3. And the denominator, I'm going to have 6n plus 6. So again, I'm going to factor it. 6 times n plus 1. Now let's start canceling. This is like the most fun part. Remember, this is one giant fraction. So I can cancel across the fractions. n plus 1 cancels. 6 cancels. n plus 9 cancels. So what we have left is n minus 3 in the numerator and nothing in the denominator. So it's just over 1. Again, we don't have to write over 1. Just like if you had the number 2, you wouldn't write it 2 over 1. So I'm just going to say my final answer is the binomial n minus 3, which is perfectly okay because we factored everything right, and that's what it simplifies to be. OK, 
Okay, one last example. Yay, look at all those X's. We're going to get to factor so much. Now, careful, it's divided by, which means we're really going to multiply it by the reciprocal of that second fraction. Regardless, let's start factoring. X minus 4 doesn't factor, so we're left with X minus 4. In the denominator, that's a basic trinomial. What multiplies to be 20 and adds to be negative 9. Well, if it multiplies to be a positive and adds to be a negative, I know they're both negative. In this case, I'm going to have x minus 4 and x minus 5. What if you factor that and you got, well, negative 5 and negative 4? That's fine, because remember, with multiplication, you can write it in any order. Um, I just happen to think of negative 4 first. Now, remember, we're multiplying by the reciprocal of the other fraction. So, x squared is going to come to the bottom. And I'm going to leave it as x squared. We could write x and x if we wanted to. And then x cubed minus 5x is going to come to the top. But there's a GCF, so I'm going to factor that out. The GCF is x squared. What we're left with is x minus 5. Now, the fun part. Remember, when we're multiplying fractions, we're multiplying everything on top, everything on bottom. So it's really like one giant fraction of lots of factors. We can cancel out common factors. So x minus 4 is a common factor x minus 5 is a common factor, x squared is a common factor, we have nothing left over. But don't forget about that common factor of everything. When you have a common factor of 1 on the top, and everything has a common factor of 1 on the bottom, this fraction actually simplifies to be 1. Done. So this is just a recap of what we did in this uh, video, multiplying and dividing rationals, or multiplying and dividing fractions. Our very first step was to factor everything, and again, I'm going to add fully there. You need to fully factor everything so that you can see what those common terms are. Then you want to cancel any common factors in each fraction. So, common factors, not common terms, common factors is what we're canceling out. When you multiply, you can cancel across the fractions, because multiplying fractions just <clears throat> means multiplying by the, the numerator with the numerator, and the denominator with the denominator. When you're dividing, you have to remember the step of flipping the second fraction, because dividing by a fraction means multiplying by its reciprocal. Then you just continue as you did with multiplication. So, Factor, cancel factors. That's really what we're getting at with a lot of these rational uh, expressions that we will be looking at.